Welcome back, guys. So this is going to be the follow-up to our bevel gear repair that we've made for this uh, post-drill, silver manufacturing post-drill. And the first video, we brazed everything back together where this hub was completely broken out of it. All right, so now what we're going to have to do is go ahead and get the bore trued up because it's not running uh, perfectly concentric with the gear there. So when this thing's mounted on there as it is, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and we got in a... Um, Got an expanding mandrel here that I'm just going to put it on just so that you can kind of see it running. There you go. And I see what I'm talking about. It didn't line up perfectly the way I was hoping that it would whenever we um, clamped it all together to braise it. But very little to work off of there. So my plan is to go ahead and just, we'll probably go over to the Monarch lathe. We're going to use our four jaw chuck and uh, chuck the OD of the bevel gear here and make sure that our face is running true and make sure that we're just going to try to indicate the gear the best we can to get this part of the, the gear running true. And then we'll skin that ID out to a nominal size find a piece of material, make a sleeve, and we'll just press a sleeve in there to uh, bring this bore true with the gear there. All right, so we got you over here on the Monarch lathe. I've already turned my jaws around because this is gonna be a, um, one of the better ways to chuck it using, using this part of the jaw here. And I've got it set using my scale here to approximately seven and three quarter centered. That's about the diameter of what I was measuring this uh, bevel gear at. So there's nothing really machined on this to true up on, okay? So I'm gonna be relying on the edge of these gear teeth here, just the point of them where they're gonna be resting against the jaws. And then we'll set up the indicator to see if we can't get the, uh, this part of the gear running true here or maybe even measure out here a little bit. So probably use this part of the bevel right here actually to indicate on. So let's go ahead and stick it in there. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna keep it held against the jaw. We'll snug them up lightly. Make sure they're snug. All right, I'm gonna come on around here. Now, I am gonna put some copper pads in there. What we call copper soft jaws, just a copper pipe is all this is. This will provide a couple of things. It's a soft barrier between the hardened jaw and the cast iron to keep it from marring it or you know moving the cast iron gear teeth. The other thing it does, the copper actually helps provide a little bit more friction uh, between, the, between the jaw there. Just has a little more bite to it, you know? Now we're going to try to be careful about how much pressure we put on this. We don't want to bend it and crack it anyway. And we're going to be taking some very light cuts on this bore. So it doesn't need a whole lot of pressure to hold it to keep from coming out. But I am going to go ahead and bump on it. I want to make sure that the gear is kind of bumped up against the face of the jaw here. Something fell, and I'm not sure what it is, but let me go check. It sounded like a scale. Okay, it was another one of my, this is one of, our, one of my brass shims right there. Now this face may not be perfectly flat either, but we want to try to get it averaged out the best we can and just make sure that we try to get as many points of reference on that face as we can. So that's looking 
That's looking pretty good. That's probably about as best as we can get it right there. How close am I? Not too bad. And I'm wanting to try to get up in there to indicate this, so. Those copper pads are just slightly in the way. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. This area here. So you got this uh, cam feature cast into the gear so you can't indicate there. And we could go off the center of the bore and just uh, you know use the middle of the hub there. And we might check that just to see what it's like. Let's see what we can do. I do have some tips, I believe. I think I might have taken them to the new shop. Might need a smaller tip to get in there past those carpet pads. Yep, it's trying to hit that one there. Might be able to get off just enough to be able to indicate it. That's where it's hitting this part of the casting there. But what we want is 180 out. So let's see, that's 31. And that's 20. So that's our low. Make sure you guys can see that. I think so. Let's tighten our high first. Make sure that it's tight. Doesn't take much. Especially when you don't have them torqued very, very tight. So 46, 40. So just tighten this high here a little bit. Loosen this one slightly. Go back to our high and push it over a little bit more. This is still a little bit low here. Not much. It's gonna be pretty good. Let's go back to these. Where am I at on that? Let me check my tips and see if I can get in there on a little finer point. I might try this tip right here. This is a flange tip. It'll allow me to kind of get the, the stem out away from the part just a little bit and stick that flange up in there. go put this guy up before I lose it. All right, let's try this again. I think this might work right here. Yeah, this is gonna, I think this is gonna help right here. Kind of get up behind that, that brass or copper, I mean. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Come on. So one of them, one of them sticking out further, I should have, I should have set it up with this one here instead. Maybe that's not gonna work. All right, this one pad is sticking out way too far. I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna take this guy out. I need to go hit this on the belt sander and make this a little bit thinner. Got that one belt sanded. I just kind of eyeballed it, took some off of it. it looks like that's going to work pretty good right there. So let me go ahead. I'm going to do the same thing with this so that it stops giving me a problem there. Like I said, we'll just redo. We'll bump it back true again and then indicate our face. All right, let's try this again. Try to get that gear seated. That one really needs to be sanded off as well, but let's see if we can go ahead and get this thing in there. Now what's wrong? What did I do now? Man, all right. <laughs> this came loose here, I gotta tighten it up. Are we ever gonna get this thing indicated? I hope so too. All right, I think we're gonna have it there. So let's go ahead and start with that. It's about 16, 17, 19. It's not far off right there. Go ahead and snug that a little bit and let's go to this one. Where are we at? 34, 35, and 40. 
tighten that one a little bit. Let's just say 10 there, 12, 10, and 12. Tighten that up a little bit. So it's about averaged around 11. And so is that one there. So let's go back to this side here. Let's go back in with it. 10, 9, well, it's pretty well there. I think we got it there. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that it's tight. Make sure that one's tight. Check the other side again. It's looking pretty even. So we should be averaged in the center. So let's fire it up and see what it looks like, shall we? That's looking, uh, that's looking pretty good to me. Now I'm not looking at the, the bore of the hub there, I'm looking at the gear, the bevel gear. And it's looking like it's running nice and straight. Just try to focus on the bevel gear. Face of it looks like it's within a few thousandths of uh, being true. The OD that we're chucked on looks like it's pretty, pretty true. So now I can definitely tell that that hub is, is running out some. And I mean, it would be nice to have seen how close this thing actually was before it was broken. You know what I mean? You can tell the other side of the hub is definitely out there. So part of this was because of the, the hub being broken out and then having to braze it back in there. So I'm gonna get some tooling ready and we'll just go ahead and skin that ID out of there. All right, we got us a good boring bar uh, to bore that out there. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and measure the bore a couple of times and see what diameter is. And I'm gonna make a note of it. <clears throat> Just using my Stare It uh, 229 telescoping gauge and a mic here. And that right there is six thousandths over one inch. I had measured this with uh, calipers before I started the job and I remember it was a little over one inch. Yeah, one inch six thousandths. So uh, what I'm gonna do I, <clears throat> before I start boarding this, I'm gonna fire off an email to the owner. I'm gonna ask them, can they mic or measure the shafts either with a micrometer or calipers, whatever they got and see if they can get a more accurate measurement on the shaft that this fits on. I'd like to know if this has wear in it, if it's, um, if it was machined specifically to that size to fit the shaft, or if we have room to tighten up our new bore with our sleeve to make it a better fit. So uh, he's been pretty good about uh, contacting me and responding. So uh, I should be able to know something by the time we're ready to finish this bore out. But I'm gonna go ahead and write this down our factory bore is 1.006 and that way I don't have to try to to remember that in my head all right all right we're going to touch off our bore I wanted to point this out so on our part we have this feature right here that's sticking out so whenever I was setting my bar on the proper stick out I gave it a little extra and as I run this up in here all right I'm watching the the back side and the carbide insert is 
protruding through the back of the part. Just got to make sure that we're not going to crash right there. You can see I've got it pretty close, but on these small diameter bars, you want to keep your stick out as minimum as possible to uh, help prevent deflection and chatter. But you can see right there, we're clearing just fine and we're coming through there. So I'll put me an indicator here as well as a reference to our, our uh, stop position, our Z0, should we call it. get our tool touched off and take some light cuts probably going to take about an eighth of an inch out of this we need we need to make sure that we've got enough wall thickness to create a strong enough sleeve that's going to be in there let's see what this what this is like that's only 25 thousandths See how, how far out that thing is, 25 thousandths is quite a bit on cleaning up a bore. So take another 25, let's see if it cleans it up yet. That back side is still not cleaning it up brown. Actually, yeah, we can still see a void in there that hadn't cleaned up. So that bore was, that hub was off quite a bit. Well, we still have a few more cuts to make. I'm just gonna go ahead and take another 25. I don't know if that light's bothering you or hurting the video or what. That's a little less harsh there. Tune it down a little bit. There we go. How about that? Still don't have that back end cleaned up. Let's see where we're at right now though. I'll just use the calipers for that. So one inch, 60 thousandths is what I measured there with the calipers. All right, we finally got our bore cleaned up all the way through there. Yeah, we're about one inch 85 there and about. So 25, 35, 40, about 40 thousandths to come out of there. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot for that inch and one eighth or 1.125 inches bore. And then that, that way that'll give the sleeve a 16th wall thickness. We should be down to our final cuts there, so we'll use our telescope gauge and get a measure on the bore. One inch, 13 thousandths on the mic. So we'll just split that into two finish cuts and uh, try to land on our 1.125. Dial in six thousandths. We'll make this cut, measure it, make a finish cut. Looks like it got about five thousandths. Just over five thousandths of what we need to come out. I always double check it, take another measurement there, compare your readings. It's just over five. We're not gonna try to get that technical with it though, but 
it would be five thousandths and three tenths exactly. Let's just take five thousandths and call it done. Okay, finish pass on the bore anyway. So my plan is to machine a sleeve. I've got some steel tubing we can use and uh, we'll machine a sleeve and get it installed and uh, we'll bore it. We'll bore it to our final size once we uh, get it pressed in there. Back out on my tool so I don't scratch the bore. Let's see if I landed on my size I wanted. Whenever I adjusted the uh, cross slide dial, I tried to go just past the mark. So if I want to read tents, this isn't this isn't critical, but if I want to read tents on what our size is, we're at 1.124 and seven tenths. So we took exactly five thousandths down to the tenth. So we'll know what to make our um, sleeve to. So we're gonna have to take this out of the, uh, out of the four jaw. I am gonna chamfer this by the way, get rid of that sharp edge. But unfortunately we're gonna have to take this out because I need to, when I, I need to press it in there. And when I press it in, I wanna press on the hub. But I'm gonna machine the sleeve. So once we get that pressed in there and we go back in here, we know we can bump the gear teeth back up to the jaws like we did the first time. And then we'll be able to uh, indicate the bore of the sleeve that we pressed in there to get it back on our, um, our center that we're running at right now. It's not what I like to do, but sometimes you just gotta take them out and then put them right back in the machine. We're just gonna give that bore a little bit of a polish. Just roll this up on a quarter inch rod there. We just wanna kinda polish it out, get rid of that rough surface in there. That feels better. And then of course I'll, we'll remeasure it and see if that changed any. So now we're about two tenths over. Yep, two tenths over, inch and an eight, but just polishing it out, making it a little bit more smooth, less chance of a, a galling going in there with the bushing. All right, so this is the material that we're gonna to use to machine our sleeve. This is some steel tubing, some stuff that I have had for years. It was a material that my dad had in our rack and we've used it for so many jobs, including using a lot of it to uh, roll machines on. But it's an inch and a quarter OD tubing with an 11 16 ID. So this is just gonna be some standard, uh, regular old lathe work. We're gonna bore the ID just to make it round and true, turn the OD to match, uh, match our bore in the gear, part it off, and then, you know, get it pressed into to the gear. So I'm not going to get too detailed with machining this because it's just regular machine work that I've shown a lot of, but we'll get you some shots along the way and uh, go ahead and get moving on this.
Here's an old school trick that I learned in my first year, you know, whenever you're trying to machine your work pieces like this, especially some tubing, to just take a rag and uh, soak it with some cool tap water and wrap it around your part and it'll, it'll quickly uh, cool the part down so that whenever you measure it, you know, you're not uh, measuring something that's swollen out bigger and, and it shrink on you whenever you go to part it off. So that's all I'm doing there. Just cooling that tube down so that I can make my finished passes on here and get it down to the, to the right size I need. So, and by the way, what I'm gonna be shooting for on the size is I want I want an interference, but I don't want it too much interference. Because of that piece being kind of thin and it cast iron, you're very likely to bust that by pressing something in there that's too tight. So really what I'm gonna be shooting for is a metal to metal fit. So I'm gonna to try to size this to the same size bore that we put in there. And I'm gonna be using some uh, 635 Loctite whenever we press it in there as well. And that'll definitely uh, help it to retain in there. So that's cooled down nicely so I can go ahead and what I can do is go ahead and get my, my measurement here and uh, start on our finish, our finish turning. Just checking my uh, finished diameter there. 125 and 3 tenths on that end right there. Let's check this in. 125 and 2 tenths on this end right there. So we've got our diameter matching our bore size, so we're going to leave it right there. It is cool. It's not warm or hot or anything like that. So we get it parted off, and then we'll put it back in there and face that back side. So you remember what I've talked about in past videos where you can use your, your scale to accurately measure a distance within 10 thousandths. So I measured that, I put it in there and I measured it two and one sixteenth visually on the scale line. So let's see where I, where I ended up using the uh, calipers there. Get it off that edge. So two inches, 64 thousandths. So Pretty darn close to two and one sixteenth with a scale measurement. So we'll just put it back in the chuck there. Uh, just clean this side up, just clean it up and uh, chamfer it. And then this will be ready to uh, press in. All right, guys, that's, that's ready to go in. We'll clean it good, get the oil off of it. Uh, gotta be oil free if you're gonna use Loctite. So we'll clean it really good and we'll go ahead and get it pressed into our gear. All right, so there's our sleeve. I've got that really, really short step machine on the very front of it so that it'll just, it'll just start in the bore there and help align it straight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean it off good. I'm gonna use this right here, Super Degreaser Plus. Make sure there's no oil left on it. And then here's our Loctite that we're gonna use, the uh, 635. And what you wanna do with this is completely cover the surface that you're gonna be putting it on, just like that right there. And then we should be, we should be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and use this rag that's got the cleaner on it there to clean it off with my gloves. And I'm going to 
stick it on there just like that. And get the camera moved and press it in. Come on now. It's trying to, there it goes. Yep, it did. Still, still tried to crack it there at the end. This is a point of the project where I'm trying to uh, keep my cool and uh, my frustration level down because this is what I was trying to avoid and, I, and it still ended up doing it. And it never fails. You get right to the end of a project and you have one thing go wrong, which causes more time, more labor, more setups to be able to uh, fix the part that screwed up. So on this part of the hub right there, it did crack and that's what I was afraid was gonna happen. So I should have given it more clearance. I believe with the addition of the Loctite in there, it, it gave it more interference because the Loctite had to be in there somewhere and it just was just enough to make this side crack. Realistically, I don't think it's gonna cause the, the gear to come apart, but it's definitely it's definitely not right. I believe you can put the thing on there and it's gonna work just fine with that crack there. It starts on the face and it goes through to right about where the radius is. So I may just go ahead and uh, grind this a little bit out and use the TIG Torx and use the silicon bronze and uh, just try to fill that crack up. The problem with that is that it's putting heat back on the part. The, the Loctite, it's gonna burn the Loctite by getting it too hot. So it's just, you know, you take, you take one step forward and then you gotta take three steps back to be able to finish something like this out. And it really does get frustrating because I got a lot of time in, in fixing this thing. So we gotta make sure that we get it right so that it's a usable part. So I'm gonna go work on this. I'm not gonna film it because I'm just frustrated at this right here but let me get this little crack fixed up. And then when we go to uh, finish our bore there, I'll bring you back to show you our, our, our what hope, hopefully will be the final segment of uh, fixing this gear. All right, I'm having to re refilm this little uh, video for you because my last one didn't capture audio. But what I have done is I've got this TIG braze together, that crack that formed right there on that hub. I took my carbide burr and ground it completely out down to the to the steel sleeve, and then just use the uh, the TIG welder and the silicon bronze uh, filler wire and TIG that up. And it flowed in there nicely, and it flowed into this uh, this filler rod nicely. So it actually worked out pretty good. And went ahead and peened it again with the needle scaler to kind of give it the same texture. And I think it's going to work out just fine. So just an unfortunate thing that happened. And uh, I, was, I was concerned about this cracking. I was trying to eliminate that and it did it anyway. So I should have had a little bit more clearance there with the Loctite going in there. I, I think the Loctite is what caused that to end up splitting uh, because we had a metal to metal fit in there. There was nowhere for the Loctite to go. All right, so hopefully crisis diverted on that and we're ready to go now. We're, we're set back up in the chuck. I haven't indicated it true yet, but we do have our copper pads in there. I have it bumped against the jaws. So let's go ahead and get this indicated. All right, we're gonna use our, we're gonna use our Sterrett dial indicator. And then this is the uh, Sterrett number 670 ID attachment there. I'm saying that because there's usually people that see this and ask what it is. So it's a Sterrett number 670B is what that one is. They have an A and a B, the B being the longer arm here. And it works beautifully for getting in the bores like this on the lathe so that you can indicate it. All right, so we are 10, 20, about 26 thousandths out. All right, so on this one, you're gonna go opposite. You're gonna tighten your lows and loosen your highs since you're doing the bore. About in the middle there, so we're gonna go to this one, tighten that low, and then loosen this high right there. And just keep moving it. Just keep moving it that way. Now we're gonna to have to split it again and go to this one. Let's see, tighten the low. No, I'm sorry. I did have that right. Okay, tighten that one, loosen your high. Even I get confused sometimes. 
You want to push it towards your low when you're on the bore there. It's pretty tight, so I need to loosen the high there. Boy, that's uh, pretty well spot on. It's about a half a thousandth movement on the on the hand. And some of that's going to be that heat distortion from that little bit of TIG weld. And so I want to go around and make sure all, all four jaws are equally snug, though. So let me check that. That's something that I always do. You could have three tight jaws and one loose jaw. That looks pretty good. All right, we should be ready to finish this bore out. Got about an eighth of an inch to come out. To, so I've got that set to a 5,000 feed rate and we're running 532 RPM. We're almost maxed out on our Monarch here. I did make sure that that boss is sticking out is going to clear the compound and not hit once we get to the back of the bore. Ninety thousands. Take another fifty. All right, I'm down to my finishes right here. We should have about 10 thousandths to come out of this. And we're gonna finish it one thousandths over one inch. So 1.001 .001 is what we're looking for. And right now I'm at 990 and a half. So we've got basically 10, 10 and a half thousandths to come out. I'm gonna go ahead and take half of that and I am going to go ahead and take this uh, cutting oil. I'm just putting a little, a little bit in there in the bore to help lubricate that cut. Take five on the dial here, and let's make this pass. And that should leave us about five thousandths to come out of there. We'll make a finish pass. That tool's doing pretty good. That's one of those little CCMT inserts. Yeah, it ended up taking more than I wanted, so we've got three thousandths to come out of that. Let me check that again. That's always a good time to go ahead and triple up on your measurement with your telescope gauge to be sure that you didn't do something wrong. So, yeah, it's showing that we've got three thousandths to bring it to the size that I'm looking for. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and check it one more time. Three thousandths looks like that's the magic number of what we're going to be looking for. Cleared our tool there at the end. We're going to retract the tool so we don't rub the, the bore. All right, let's see if I hit my mark there. Our bore feels nice and smooth, so it got rid of all those rough tool marks with our roughing cuts. All right, there we go. One over, maybe not quite one. I'm gonna say nine tenths. Eight tenths, all right, so one inch, eight tenths, and I could hit that with that flapper that little rod with the flap wheel with some emery 
and open up another half a thousandths out of that quickly because of the tool marks in there. All right, so I need to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer this corner here with a tool. Uh, let me make sure that's gonna clear before I spin it up. Oh yeah, that's gonna clear just fine. Just wanna kinda break the corner off. I like that. It looked like we landed right on the 1,000th mark there. So we took about two, maybe three tenths total out of that. And it's got that bore even slicker than it was. So I'm going to call this guy finished up. We'll get it out. The only thing i got to do, I'm going to use a, a Noga deburring tool on the back side and just uh, manually uh, cut a little chamfer on the back side there. So what I keep forgetting to tell you is that we still got to set this up over in the mill and uh, drill this hole through there as well. That will actually be the last step in our repair. So I needed a 732nd long drill bit and I had one, but the, uh, the cutting edges were burned up from a previous job. It looked like it was stainless steel and it was pretty dull. So I knew it would have a hard time cutting. So we just went ahead and touched it up over here on the, the Lyle drill grinder. So here's our mill set up for getting this uh, hole drilled through there. It's a pretty simple operation. Technically you could clamp this down and just do it by hand, but that's not my style. I'm gonna try to do things more accurately. So I've got our fixture plate that we've been using nearly the whole job just pulled up against an angle plate here. Just squared the angle plate up with a machinist square. All right, we've got this uh, planer gauge under, underneath it to uh, prevent it from being pushed down. So we got that locked in there and then we just used our uh, drill bit there to uh, line up the hole. I just eyeballed the hole as straight up and down as I could. And then I just turned the drill on actually like this. I just turned it on and then come down into the hole with the, uh, the blank end of the, of the drill and just lined it up by sight by watching that drill, you know, being pushed one way or the other and X and Y and just got it centered up there. So it won't take but about three seconds to drill a hole through there. So let's go ahead and get that done and that'll be it. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna come down in the hole easy That's all it is to it. Easy as that. So hole is now drilled. I have to go in there in the board and just deburr it where we came through. But that is our last machining step right there. I'll get everything broken down and get it out of here. Well, this guy is finished up and it definitely turned into a, uh, a job uh, more than I bargained for. I'll tell you that. We had a couple of problems along the way and it just ended up taking a, a lot longer than I expected it to. But We've got a part that's over hundred years old that's saved and it's gonna be functional once again. The owner's gonna be able to put this to work and actually have it to be able to use it. Uh, whenever I was uh, emailing him about uh, the size of the bore there and you know, not, it not being concentric, I had asked him, is this something that you're actually gonna be using or is it just something that you, know, you collected that you wanna have on your wall for show or what? 
And he said that he's actually planning on using it some, but he won't use it a lot. He says he'll use it to small, uh, I'm sorry, drill small holes occasionally and maybe uh, uh, pieces of wood there as well. So it will be used somewhat, but I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be used every day, every week, all the time. Um, so it's just unfortunate that this kind of stuff happens. You have these old antique parts that get busted and broken during transit. But luckily all the pieces were there whenever he received the shipment and we were able to fix this stuff, you know. I thought the arm here turned out uh, very well. It, look, it looks good. So this one's done. I'm ready to uh, get it boxed up and get it, get it back to the owner. And, you know, we had a lot of interesting things here to uh, share with you in the video on this repair. Our brazing process, the prep process to get it together, and then uh, setting it up in the four jaw chuck and the lathe to be able to bore this thing out uh, somewhat accurately. You know, that was, uh, that was some more good stuff to share with you there as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. I know I've got at least a couple of them out of this job here to share with you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And uh, the guys that are out there learning, maybe you've picked up a tip here and there during this process of me sharing. I, I always try to uh, record these videos for you in a way that is, is entertaining for one, but I'm hoping that some people are getting something out of it that they can apply in their own shop and their own work is there as well. All right. That's my intentions when I make these videos is to be helpful with the guys watching, guys and girls out there. So... That's going to be it. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you on the next machining project.